Hey guys, welcome back to Between Sessions. My name is Ebony Harris. And I'm Elisa Bokeen. And we are two brown chicks changing the face of therapy on both sides of the couch. We are back. <laughs> we are back. We are back. After a short, was it short? <laughs> it wasn't short. <laughs> She's saying that to me because I was the reason for the highest. But... We are back. We will be doing weekly podcasts again. We might do seasons <laughs> so that we can make sure we're taking care of ourselves and having breaks. But we wanted to make sure that we get back on, start recording regularly. So today we are going to jump right in with a conversation around boundaries. And so Elise is going to kind of explain what we're talking about and then we'll go from there. Yeah. So how do you know if you have poor boundaries? Do you know when you, you know. do you know, like, how do you, how do you know? How do you know? And this is something that comes up a lot. I think with, uh, clients, you mm-hmm. know, is we'll talk about boundaries. We talk about limits. And I think what often follows this conversation is people will sort of ask, well, when you love somebody, mm. shouldn't they just have access to you? Right. I shouldn't be able to say no. I'm not supposed to say no in a relationship. You just yeah. give them whatever they want. A relationship or even family. with family. Family mm-hmm. is a big one, right? Yeah. Parents are asking for things. If siblings that may struggle in some areas are asking for things, then we tend to feel like we are obligated to do for them. Right. Because they're family. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true because boundaries are what helps to not only preserve our well-being, but it helps to preserve the well-being of the relationship, right? It's mm-hmm. And in love, there is always boundaries. This is one thing I always tell clients is you think about parents with children, right? There's all yeah, kinds of boundaries. Nice. Yeah, you know, otherwise they'll be on an all-sugar diet right. playing in the middle of the road, <laughs> right? But right. why do we set those limits? It's because we love the children and it's for their well-being and for our own mental health, right? Right. Um, so yeah, we're going to dive into that today. So one of the signs that you may be struggling with boundaries, that you have poor boundaries, is that you're afraid to tell people how you really feel. Yes. If you are hesitant to be honest, if you feel like, well, maybe I could just avoid the conversation, which we all like to do, then that probably means you have poor boundaries. Do we all like to do that? Do we all like to avoid the con- conversation? We don't. <laughs> I like to avoid... <laughs> She does not like to avoid. We just uh, had a situation like that in real life. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to do it. She was like, I'm going to let you handle it. because <laughs> We know what Lisa handles things. But yes, so some people like to avoid <laughs> confrontation. Some people like to avoid just speaking their mind because they are not sure how it will be received. And we don't want to have to deal with the conflict or the fall off fallout if that person doesn't receive it the way you want it to, or even the disappointment. Right. One right. of the things I realize a lot working with clients is the reason why they don't set boundaries is because there's this fear mm-hmm. of, okay, I say this thing and they don't do it. Right. Now what? Right. What am I supposed right. to do at right. this point? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think it's that discomfort with the discomfort that your no mm-hmm. or your limit may Make cause. Sense. Right. Yes. And It will cause it, right? Like it's going to be, there's going to be maybe some sort of disruption, Mm -hmm. but, and sometimes we make it a lot bigger in our heads than it actually is. Yeah. Right. We make it a lot bigger than it actually is, but that's a, that's a sign is that you avoid uh, just even telling people how you really feel or what you really want because you're afraid of causing some sort of unease. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another sign is if you are continuously overextended. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many people that are doing for others, taking care, of making sure everybody else is okay, not having time to really focus on themselves and take care of themselves, or always running late. If yeah. you never have enough time because you're always trying to make sure everybody else is taken care of and do what you need to do, do what you feel like you need to do for others, um, that's probably a sign that you don't have boundaries. You should not constantly be tired. You should not always be um, in a mood and frustrated and annoyed that people don't understand your schedule or anything like that. Mm -hmm. If you set boundaries, then they won't understand, right? Um, So I think that's a big one. If you always feel overextended, like there's just not enough time in the day because you have so many obligations to other people, you probably need to set some boundaries. Yeah. And that overextension, a lot of the times, the, it's what you were saying, the 
easiest way or maybe the quickest way to to identify it is how does your body feel? Yes. Right. Am I fatigued a lot of the Mm -hmm. time, which can often leave us feeling irritable a lot. Right. So, so check in with your bodies. Yeah. Right. Check in with your bodies. What is your body telling you? Because our bodies are constantly communicating to us. So overextension is, can really lead to burnout really quickly. Right. Right. And I think that really kind of, uh, is very similar to the other one, which is you're you're a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. You want to please everyone, right? Like you want everybody to be pleased. And the more people you add to the scenario, the less chance you're yes. going to have of pleasing everyone. And that is just because as humans, we have our own agendas. Mm-hmm. Agendas, you know, yeah. that yeah. doesn't make us bad people. It just is. You know, I might, for example, you're planning a party. And you want everybody to be happy with that experience. Mm -hmm. That may not happen because for whatever reason or an outing, you know, you're planning an outing. You're going to go do a trip and I was going to say vacation. You're going to do a group trip and you're trying to make sure you have activities that fits everyone's personality. It's just not going to happen. It's a lot of work. (laughs) It's not going to happen. And nowhere in that do you include what you want. Right. Right. Like, well, I really want to do this, but I know everybody else doesn't want to do that or nobody's going to want to do that. Or, uh, you know, this this is really important to so and so. Uh, And again, it doesn't have to be events or outings in that way. It's just kind of a way of life where you're trying to please everyone. I want mom to be happy. I want dad to be happy. I want, Mm -hmm. you know, partner to be happy. Kids. It's just it's not going to work. It's not going to work and it will often leave you feeling really resentful because I think the other expectation is that you hope that people are going to show up like that for you. That's typically what it is, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show up in the way that I hope they will. And and even though, even if you know, I don't need all of what I do. I just want a fraction of it. So maybe if I overdo it, then Mm -hmm. they will start to give me a little bit of what I need. And that is not the way to have people give you what you need. Yeah. And then they'll even like recognize it. Right. That's what I was about to say. Because you usually just have to say it Mm -hmm. in a clear way (laughs) for them to understand that that's what you need. People aren't going to, I say this so much. I've been saying this a lot, like the last three months, I feel like you cannot expect yourself from other people. Mm. And we often try to, I'm going to treat them this way in hopes they'll treat us that way. Right. I'm going to respond this way in hopes there was, that. that's just not how it works. It just doesn't. And, and you're leading yourself to like disappointment and frustration when you have these expectations that they should handle a situation the way that you handle it. Yeah. And it's not fair to the other person also because they're not agreeing to this exchange per se. Yeah. And it's easy to to think that the person who is doing all the things, that this is just kind of how they are. Oh, mm-hmm. they enjoy doing all those things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I used to be friends with somebody who was like that, who would plan everything out and was giving us, you know, the agendas. Mm-hmm. And on one hand, it was annoying. But on the other hand, it was like, all right, well, this is what you like to do. But then later, we'd sometimes complain about it. Mm-hmm. It's like, one, nobody's asking you to do it. <laughs> two... It's kind of annoying to us, but you're also the one taking the initiative to right, do it, right? right. So, you know. The, Sometimes it, we're doing things thinking it's for other people, mm-hmm. and it's not, the other person doesn't even receive it the same way you intended. No, no, yeah. So Which we is why be, you have to honor yourself. Right, and that's that resentment. Yeah. And that leaves us feeling drained again. So that's another indicator that you may have poor boundaries. And I feel like talking about that, I feel like those three overextending yourself, people pleasing. And then the next one is no one is ever disappointed in you, right? Mm. So every there's never a time that anyone is ever disappointed, meaning you always are able to show up for every single person anytime they need you all the time. Yeah. While that sounds noble and great and all of that, it probably means that you don't have good boundaries. Yeah. It probably means you're not checking in with yourself to make sure that you have the capacity to be there for them in that way, that you have the time, all of that. But if everybody in your life is like, oh, no, no, that's the person you call. They're yeah. always available. They're yeah. always there. They're all, You probably don't have good boundaries. Yeah. And you're not being honest with yourself. Right. Like the, there's just no way that you're on the same page with everybody all the time. All the time. And that you're being honest with yourself, that you're honoring yourself. Right. Yeah. Because, again, conflict in it of itself is not a bad thing. It just means we see things differently. We want different things. That's just part of being human. 
So if you are always the yes person, if you are always the person who does for other people, there are probably times that you are not honoring what mm -hmm. you need at that time, what you want at that time. Yes. So yeah, that's another great indicator. Yeah. And I also think even with that, I think about the opposite of it where people are always disappointed with, with mm -hmm. you because again, you're overextending yourself. And so yeah. then you don't that's make true. it on time or you don't show up or you're last minute canceling all mm -hmm. the time because you didn't want to tell them no in the beginning. Yep. Right. So that can go either way. If no, if you're always like letting people down or people are always like, well, you always say you, if you get the label of flaky, Right. Mm. And I think this is good for people that label people as flaky. It's typically not because a person just doesn't care mm -hmm. or doesn't want to be there. The problem is they probably really, really want to be there, but they're putting too many things on their plates and yeah. something has to fall at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Managing too many things also. And, you know, I've said it before, if everything is urgent, then nothing's a priority. Nothing like, how do you right. prioritize your life? Right. So, right. Yeah. The other one that I would say is that you fall in love really quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this one is tough, I think, because we get so many messages, you know, Hollywood's version of love is, ooh, love at first sight and your head over heels. And I know you have a whole... Um, oh, the chemistry thing. Yeah, yeah. the chemistry <laughs> thing, right? Like it's a trigger. That's and, and we've talked about that before where... Emotions, like really big emotions, whether they're bad or whether they're good, it's still a lot of emotion. And that can really cloud our judgment. So if you're somebody that you meet people really quickly, whether it's on a friendship level, like, oh my God, this is my best friend. Mm -hmm. And I just met her at the airport. Right, you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and I start sharing a lot really quickly yeah. or I start spending a whole lot of time really quickly, mm -hmm. um, that might be an indicator. Or if you fall in love with somebody really quickly, right? This person and they seemingly hit all the marks, all of the, the check marks of what you want in a person. You're like, this is it. This is the person. Yes. And why this can be a, an indicator of poor boundaries is because again, you start to give them a lot of access to yourself your thoughts, your body, your mm -hmm. emotions, whatever it may be, and expecting that from them as well. And the reason why this can be problematic is because it takes time to get to know people. Yes. It takes time to build trust, right. to earn trust. You might just trust them off the bat, but have they done anything to actually earn it? Yes. And that doesn't, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, and that doesn't take away from the feeling mm -hmm. of like you click with someone or you feel, but typically when you are meeting someone, it is not expected that you give them all of you from the very beginning, right? right? Because trust takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes time to really get to know someone. It takes not time to know someone's intention. Right. And so I would say even with that, if you fall in love quickly and find yourself out of love very quickly as well, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if you fall in love quickly, but then the relationship falls apart for whatever reason, yeah. right? That means that you probably were all in, giving them everything, had no boundaries for yourself or what you need or what you want or what you desire. And then it ended quickly because maybe they didn't get a chance to get to the same place you were at. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that getting to know somebody, how we are able to earn trust from people is when we consistently show up in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? Well, consistency takes time, mm -hmm. right? Like true, I right, can be consistent for a week. Yes. I might be even be able to be consistent for a month, mm -hmm. but past that, can I be consistent? You know, and so a lot of the times is the way that we get to know people where we can really start to develop those safe and secure and consistent bonds is it takes time. And it also requires us to see people in, in different experiences, yeah. right? Like it's easy for people to present a certain way when things mm -hmm. are great, mm -hmm. right? Like things are great. This is fun. What happens when you're in a stressful situation? Right. right. What happens when there's a challenge? How do they show up then? So, yeah. And I think with that, it makes me think of falling in love, yes, easily, but any pattern that continues to repeat itself mm -hmm. over and over and over again. So whether that's I fall in love with people as soon as I meet them or as soon as I have sex with someone, they stop calling mm -hmm. or I make friends and we have fun and then they just stop like that. That probably is also an indicator that you have poor boundaries because it's really the repetitive of it. And what are you doing differently? 
Yeah. How are you approaching this situation differently? What boundaries may need to be set so that you don't find yourself in that same situation? And, and to your point around like consistency, I always I love and hate the ninety day rule because I just think it's not necessary. But <laughs> which I, one? The ninety day fiance? No, not just, <laughs> <laughs> no the uh, that guy that I don't really talk about his ninety day rule around like not having sex for ninety days. I don't think it's necessary. Well, let me not say this. I think it's necessary if you find yourself in similar patterns. Then mm-hmm. you need to decide. Maybe it's not 90 days. Maybe it's 30 days, 60 days, whatever the case may be. But you might, and it's just like a go-to, but you might need to set like, this is a boundary for me. I know that I, my emotions develop quickly. I know that I get excited very easily. And so because of that, because I need to see consistency, because mm-hmm. I need to see what life looks like after 30 days, um, because I need to see more of who you are, then it makes sense for you to possibly have some type of a limit on, I have to have this many days of knowing you and us spending time together and me seeing the consistency before I'm willing to give you my body because I feel a way, or sorry, I don't like that why I said that, before I, we have sex. Yeah. Because... I know that if it doesn't go this way, then I'll find myself in the same situation I've been in before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that, you know, if you see the same patterns over and over again, then that is a sign that maybe you have some boundaries that need to be set or you need to be a little bit stronger in. Right. Because if you're the type of person who can handle just having yeah. casual sex, like that's fine. Yeah. But it's like you said, do you know that about yourself? Right. Do you know that about yourself? Do you know that you, that, that is something that you can separate emotions and relationship from the sexual? If you are, there's not an issue, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you have found consistently about yourself that you end up wanting to invest more of yourself or wanting more from the relationship, yeah, yeah. so much of this is just with anything, with therapy, with healing, it is self-awareness. Yes. <laughs> That is a big part That's where of it the journey begins. How well do you know yourself? Not what you're telling yourself mm-hmm. and who you want to be, but who you are currently, right? right? Because I feel like sometimes we often have an idea of this is who I want to be. And so when I'm in situations, oh, no, 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 I can handle that because that's who I want to be. But in yeah. reality, are you that person? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have a version in your head mm-hmm. of who you want to be. And that person is the ideal version of you versus what you actually do. Right. <laughs> what are your behaviors show? <laughs> Right. Oh, I can handle casual sex, but yeah. then every time you have sex and they don't, if they don't call you back immediately, you're like freaking you're, out. Yeah. You know? Or you internalize that as something is wrong, wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to honor ourselves. We yes. have to honor ourselves. And I think along with that, oh, another way for you to know that you may have poor boundaries if you're not other honoring other people in their autonomy. That's right. Right. So if you are trying to control what they do, how they do it, what they think, what mm-hmm. they feel, how they react, anything like that. If you're trying to control how, how they navigate life, mm-hmm. then you may have poor boundaries because your boundaries does not only mean for you. That That's means right. you have to respect other people's boundaries as well. Yeah. Right. And and no one came into this world with the expectation that you would determine the rest of their life for them. Right. Mm-hmm. They they mm-hmm. have to have some autonomy. They have to be able to make their own decisions. And sometimes again, I go into the people pleasing, but even more than that, I think there's sometimes this this honor and helping and like, well, I'm just helping them out. I'm just trying to make sure they're okay. But where, what about giving them space to fall right. so they can figure it out for themselves? That's right. That's right. You know, so yeah. I think that trying to control other people's experience is really, really mm-hmm. important for you to be aware of and even understanding that you're doing it again, going yep. back to the self-awareness. Well, I do think it 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 does mask itself as, well, I, it's because I love them. It's yep. because I want the best for them. And unless it's your child... <laughs> and even they get and to have all And time. even then they get to... <laughs> yes. And especially your adult children, which is something that <laughs> I'm on the verge of that, you know, with 18 year olds and 20 year olds. But yes, unless it's your child and you are responsible for them and for their well being and their safety, mm-hmm. how do you know that you know better what's best for them? Yeah. How do we assign that role to ourselves? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe what's best for them is to, how you said, go down that route learn from their experience, overcome that experience, and then build the confidence yes. that they need in order to not do that again. Yes. Because otherwise what we do is we create dependency. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing is sometimes that's what we're trying to create mm. because we if think you that need me, mm-hmm. then I don't have to worry about you leaving. That's right. right. But if you if it's a choice, you may not choose me. Yep. But if you need me, 
then yes. you will stay. So it's like we're trying to build in a position for ourselves, mm-hmm. right? And that has, again, goes back to our own self-worth, self-value, how lovable we feel. So that's why it's important also. And because, again, it's not our job. It's not our job to direct other people's lives. I think this gets really, really, really difficult in relationships where your partner's decisions and choices really directly impact you. Mm -hmm. But again, it goes back to, all right, well, what are my boundaries around this? Mm -hmm. So it's not easy work. We're not saying that it's easy. We're not saying that these conversations are easy. We're not saying that showing up in this way is easy. Yeah. We didn't make up the rules. This we're just telling you. <laughs> just letting you know what it is. <laughs> this is what it is. And yep. so yeah, mm-hmm. it, it is a lot of hard work. It's, it takes so much self-awareness, right? Mm-hmm. And it takes so much honesty. You have to be honest with who you are and where you are now so that you can move into where you want to be. Yeah. And a lot of times that's when we struggle because we we are so focused on who we want to be and how we want to present ourselves to other people yeah. that we're not being honest of where we are right now. I think one of the ways that I like to visualize it a lot, and I'll do this with my clients, is so imagine drawing a circle, right? You can't see me if you're listening, but if you watch the video, so there's a circle and in that circle, that's my circle of control, right? And within there are my thoughts, my choices, my words, my behaviors, my body, uh, my beliefs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is what I have control over, direct control. Then outside of this circle, there's another circle that encompasses us, right? What's in that circle are other people, other people's thoughts, other people's emotions, other people's beliefs, other people's decisions, other people's bodies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we don't have control out of any of any of that. That circle outside of us, we don't actually have control. At best, we have influence. At mm. best, we can influence people. But a lot of the times we spend our energy outside of our circle of control. Mm -hmm. And in any given day, we have a finite amount of energy. Mm -hmm. So just like our phones, if we don't recharge them, they're not going to work. So everything takes energy. That's why like when you're tired, don't even ask me what, you know, if I'm tired, don't even ask me what I want for dinner. Just choose. Just pick something. I don't even want to make a decision, (laughs) right? So everything takes energy. So if you think about that, how much of your energy do you spend trying to control what other people think of me, Mm -hmm. what other people are going to say, how other people are going to feel, what other people are going to do, and you're expending your energy on, on what's not real, yeah. Right. It's not real because at any given time, that person can decide what they want to decide for themselves. And everybody has that right. Mm-hmm. Right. We all have the right to have our own autonomy. Yeah. So spend your time in your own circle of control, figuring out what is the anxiety that comes up for me? Mm-hmm. Why do I have this need to control everything outside of me? What's the fear? Mm-hmm. What is the fear versus what is the actual threat? Right. And like I said, it's not easy, but you've got therapy. (laughs) You can do therapy for therapy. therapy. Mm -hmm. You can have someone to help you along that journey. And if you're looking for a therapist, you can always go to melaninamentalhealth.com to find a black or brown therapist in your area. And you can also follow us across social media at Melanin Mental Health, Melanin Health on Twitter. And... Go check out melaninamentalhealth.com to check out previous podcasts, merchandise. Uh, what else we got over there? If you want to support us, right. you know, you want us to be able to keep getting you these this content and these podcasts, we have a way that you can support us over there as well um, and make a love donation. And I'm just so happy to be back. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back. You know, we have missed you all and um, looking forward to 2022. Yep. We'll see you next time. Bye.